This is a practical architect video. My name is Arif Hodzik. I'm a licensed architect. I'm the practical son. I'm Bronco Hodzik. I was a general contractor for 15 years. We worked as a design build team. We're gonna go over how to hire a contractor and by what method. There are three types of arrangements in going about constructing your project. And those three arrangements are hiring an architect, and then hiring a contractor independent of that architect. Second, hiring a design build team where the architect and the construction company are merged as one. The third option is the homeowner or business owner serving as the general contractor. We're gonna break down the pros and cons of each arrangement to help you decide which one might be right for you. Number one, the owner can select the architect and then architect can prepare the drawings for design and with collaboration with the owner, design the project, make the construction drawings, and then issue the drawings for bidding to the contractors. And usually we like to see three contractors bidding on the project. After the contractors come up with the price, the owner can select which one he wants. There are several things with the contractor that you need to make sure that they have. And that's number one, licensure and the jurisdiction which they're working, insurance, they need to have experience in the type of project that you want constructed. And then also references. Owner should be able to contact those references and check how satisfied they were with the work, how fast the contractor was, did he work whatever he promised that he will do. And if all those things fall in place, the owner can hire them. I always, as a contractor, had a list of my previous four or five projects. Those customers were more than happy to take a phone call from a prospective customer. They would allow that customer to go take a look at the work that I performed. When you are present within the work, it's different than pictures. You'll be able to see, you'll be able to get a feel of the finished product. Let's say we have a three contractors bidding on a job. They will have to come with their bids and then the owner can compare the bids and see, is there a big difference between the bids? If there is a big difference, then the question is why? Because they should be close. So one of the benefits of that arrangement is that the architect can serve as an owner's representative when there's a disagreement between the contractor and the owner. But in that case, the owner has to pay the architect additional fees not as part of the design. This is work during the construction. The other option that the owner has that he does by himself, all the inspection, but then he has to rely on his knowledge what is right and what is not. The architect can serve as a guide to the homeowner to say whether or not the prices are within reason, too high or, or too low. Because it's often the case where a contractor will lowball a price in order to get the job and either A, not understand the work, or B, looking to put on a lot of change orders. The contractor may be very busy and he, on purpose, jacks up the price. And he goes on their premises, mm -hmm. if you want to pay my price, I'll figure out how to do it. It's a way to say no without saying no. And if you're willing to pay the price for that contractor, well, that's, what, that's the price of that contractor at that point in time. The number two would be the contractor hires design build team. One good thing about design build team, architect doesn't charge any additional money during the construction. He helps the contractor whatever is necessary. Also architect explain to the owner whatever needs to be done and how it is done and why it is done. There's a greater level of collaboration between the architect, builder, and the homeowner. A lot of consultation that you would be charged for by an architect in the first arrangement would be part of the overall construction cost of a design build arrangement. For more complex projects, a design build team is really good because there's a lot more value that's built into the project at no cap. But the downside to having a design build team is that the architect and contractor cannot serve as the owner's representative. So if there is a dispute, the owner has a dispute with both the contractor and the architect. You have to find design build teams. They're not as common as finding an architect and independently finding contractor independently. But some architects also may have some other contractors that they've been working with for a number of years and they feel comfortable they can work at design build. And the third arrangement is when the owner decides to be the contractor. general contractor, when he decides to subcontract everything out. As an architect, 
I have seen many owners that decide to go that route. The owner has more responsibility in making sure that all the materials are purchased correctly, that all the construction is done correctly, and then he pays appropriately. He finds the framing contractor, he finds the uh, roofing contractor, the concrete contractor, the mechanical, electrical, and plumbing, and he needs to be aware what each one has to do. That is done when owner has some experience in construction. It should not be advisable to somebody who is doing it for the first time. It is a huge time commitment because now you have to make sure subcontractors show up, you have to coordinate schedules, and if it's a complex project, it's something that definitely we do not recommend. But if it's a smaller project, it's something that many small commercial uh, business owners will do it's because they may have a labor force already. They will know other subcontractors and they're able to assemble a team of tradesmen who can accomplish the tasks. At one point, I invested in building an office building. Being an architect, I was able to design, I was able to get the permit, but the construction, I thought I was going to be involved as a general contractor, but that required a lot of commitment. That project lasted about eight months. I couldn't do any design work, I didn't have time. So uh, I would be on the phone from six o'clock in the morning, making sure that everybody's going to show up. My philosophy was when the last contractor leaves, then I'm going home, which means I was on the job all the time. And that requires a lot of dedication, but I was able to save a lot of money doing that way. Because normally, general contractor will charge about 30% on top of all other costs that he has to have. So in a way, by me doing that, I save 30%. A lot of real estate investors will do that after going through a number of projects. If they had troubles with contractors, they'll oftentimes decide to take on that role if they're trying to flip a house, maybe a second or third branch of a business that they're already running. They already have a template, they've seen it done the first time, and now they're, they're comfortable overseeing that the second, third time. Whichever way you decide, we wish you luck. <laughs> For more practical architectural content, be sure to check out our other videos.